So guys, today what we're going to be doing is trying to come up and, and really, really clarify the ideas of loops, okay? You hear me, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. So the first the, the, the first loop we have been doing, guys, is, the, of course, the, the, the if, no? So always we have if, if something, you know, do something, and then we normally have else do something, okay? And you can have as many else, uh, oh, sorry, it's else if, else, you can have as many else ifs as you want. The last one is going to be else, and then you have a, an end, okay? So these are the, the, the if if else commands, right? So we we are gonna apply them in a lot of times. Now another loops that uh, something that are called loops are basically two types of loops. As we mentioned uh, before, is or. So for example, if I have for i equal one to n, okay. Or let's say for let's do an example, i equal one to ten. Okay, what I can do is I can create, for example, I can create x of i is going to be equal to i. And then I simply close the loop. So what, what we're doing here is what, guys? What are we creating here? The start of vector. Sorry? I'm saying is that a, a vector of one yes. to 10? Yeah, exactly. This is going to be a vector of 1 to 10. So basically, x, you know, I will show you how to create also another x. This is one way of creating x, OK? So basically, what I'm saying is, if I don't define x somewhere here, MATLAB is going to start this immediately increasing. It's going to start creating x of i. So it's going to say it's going to be x position i. i, the first position is 1. Put it 1. The next one is going to be x position 2. Put it to et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the way it, it is working, this one here. So at the end, your result is going to be, guys, it's going to be simply one, two, three, up to 10. Make sense? Yes. Okay, you can have as many for loops as you want. We did one example last class on the, I think it was the, the, the transpose of a matrix. So you can have as many for loops as you want. You can also have, for loops and if loops in between, no? Uh, we're gonna work with that. Uh, and then another type of loops, guys, are for example, uh, another, another loops are the while loops, okay? So for the while loop, okay, so this is a for loop. And here we have my while loop. It has a, it is slight, sorry, it is slightly different. Okay, but you're gonna see how how this works. Now, when you have that the while loop, guys, what you need to do is you need to, you need to initialize something. Okay, so for example, I will do the same like like this one here. We create one to ten. What I will do is the following. So I will I will say you know what i equals one. Okay, and then what I will do is while i is smaller than 10, and let's say it's smaller or equal than 10, what you need to do is simply do x of i equals i. Got it? And then what I need to do is, as soon as I have initialized this one here, and I want and I want the, the i to be moving, 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 so what I will do is I will do i equals i plus 1. And then I have my n. So let's understand how this works. So I initialize i at 1, correct? So it will ask, is one smaller or equal than 10? Yes, so get into the loop. Then I do x of one equals one. My i now changes to two because it's going to be one plus one is two. Goes back again to the while loop, it says, is two smaller than 10, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what we do at the end of the day, guys, is exactly the same, one, two, three, up to 10. Make sense? Um, I just wanted to clarify, Professor. Yep. 
so if we were to then uh, use this um, and say then uh, i is equal to um, 1 to 20, then for yes. this example, it would only run i for less a 10 or less than 10. Exactly. So if you want 20, what you need to do is you need to change this one here, this part here. Make sense? Also, but for the while for the while loops, it's not um, necessarily you can have uh, a range of no, i. No, no, no. Uh, th this number here can be whatever you can imagine. Whatever. It's the same here. Huh? You can you can have a range of whatever you want. Got it? Yes. Okay. So and of course, guys, what we are doing here for with for loops and while loops, what we can do is simply we can argue, say this is x equals one to ten. Do you agree? Our sequence. We can do that directly. Now, recommendation, guys, if you can do something in a sequence like that, if there if you can build something like that. It's better than do the for loops or the while loops. The while loops takes a lot of time because it really does. It is a loop. It go it goes this way, this way, this way, this way, etc. It, it is a loop. It's the same here. Got it? Now, um, okay. Can we, let's do a, let's do a program. Let's create guys a function. Let's create my loops. My loops. Two thousand twenty three, for example. Okay, and let's create this, these loops. Let's create uh, the MATLAB sequence first. That is basically this one, equals one to 10. Then let's create the for loop. Let's create, let's create the Y loop. Okay, so let's call this one Y or let's call this x underscore four. And, and so let's call the, this resulting one x, x sequence. Uh, let's call this one x, y, okay? So what I want from you guys is that you enter, you need to enter start. I want you to enter end. And I want you to export here. Sorry, the, the export function is going to be X sequence, this is basically what MATLAB produces, X4 and XY. Okay, so these are going to be your exporting formats. So what is your start? Your start is going to be this number, right? So we can start this thing with one and 10, but this is my start and this is my end. So I want someone to tell you these two numbers. Okay, let's, let's do this in three minutes. I will stop recording so we're more efficient. Okay, guys, so what we want is to create a function, right? And we call, my loops 2023, something like that. And then what we can do is we can have a, how do we call it? Let me check. Yeah, let's call the start date, or oh, start now. What are, what are your data, right? Oh, what I'm doing. Are you with me? Start data and Data. So these are these are simply names, guys. Can be X and Y, whatever you can imagine. Okay. So now, uh, what I want to use is MATLAB command. What I want is uh, the MATLAB sequence, and then we're going to call this one X sequence, and this is going to be simply equal one to, I'm oh, sorry, is going to be equal to Do you agree, guys? Yes, yes. So we can do the for loop. So my for loop we said is gonna be called X, X4, okay. So the for loop, guys, what we need to do is for 
I equal, this is, let's do this stuff, okay? Then what do we do? We have X, we call it X4 of I is going to be equal to I, correct? Yes. And that's it. So your Y loop uh, let me let me first tell, write this one here. Works with the start data equal one and any end data. You're gonna see why what I mean in a minute. Okay, and my Y loop, remember for my Y loop, what I need to do is I would use J, okay? J equals one. I need to define first uh, my variable. And then what I need to say is why J is a smaller equal than my last value, right, guys? X, Y. I, I want to print this one. Well, I don't need to print this. And then, uh, so it's not I, it's J. And then I need to increase J. J equals J plus one. And that's it. So what I want here as outputs, guys, is going to be X sequence. X4 and XY. Do you agree with me? Yes. So let me save this one. Let me move my. Hey guys, give me just one second. Can you please start testing with a zero one? Okay, so let's start testing this, this one here. So remember the way to test that is that we need to enter simply, I want this to start at one and I want to, to finish at 10, you agree? You guys make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh oh, line 18, column six, line 18. Oh, why is this wrong? What do you mean by it's wrong by MATLAB syntax? Give me one second. This is the new MATLAB guy, so I need to, they have done some really funny stuff. Why is, is it logic here? I think it may be because it's labeled and data. I don't know if you need a space or just relabeling mm -hmm. data and or something. 
Yeah, wait a second. In data, let, let's take a look again. Let me. So let me see if if, they want, if this is able to. Oh, I have an issue here. Why? Let me see. Okay, so let me see if if this works with just strictly smaller. Ah, of course. Sorry, we're making a mistake here. This is the Y. Yeah, in, in, yes, of course, the, the R, uh, sorry, the for loop needs to have a sequence. Here in the Y loop is the one that needs to have this, this type of behavior, you see? Take a look to the for. The for starts and ends. The Y only ends. Do you see that, guys? Oh, Next I see. Yeah, yeah that so makes it was, sense. It was, yeah. it was, it was a, a clerical error. So do we need to have these spaces then between the- No, 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 sorry. No, before it didn't work because it was the, the for loop doesn't work in this way. The for loop, you need to have a sequence here in this part here. You see like, like this, take a look. You need to start at a given point and finish at a given point. In the, mm -hmm. in the while loop, you don't need to have a start. Well, the start de depends on this one, but you need to have a, an ending point, you see? Do this while, you satisfy this condition. Make sense? Okay. Okay. Um, yes. Oh, is it because you had a four before the J? Yes. Where there was yes, to be exactly. I had four here. I forgot to change this. Okay. Exactly that. Okay. So let's run this one here. I'm oh, sorry what I'm doing. I need to run this with this one. And here we go. You see? Of course, all of them are, are exactly the same. Now, do you, do you get these numbers? Are you okay with this? I just need two seconds to run it. Yep. So in the command window, I just then copy the uh, function. The, yes, you copy. Remember, you run these functions using this one here. Okay. And then do I need to amend to say start data is one and data is 10? Yes. You put, yes, exactly. So what you do is, where's my, sorry, my command is this one here. Okay, got it. Make sense? Now, challenge to you, okay? Challenge to you. So when do yeah. we use this? Just so I have context. Oh, the, the four, you, we are gonna have real context in, in the homeworks, you know, we're gonna solve with real real examples with four. Oh, with four, so okay. If you have a sequence and you want to analyze them, we're gonna use mm -hmm. them, okay? okay? You're gonna see, we're gonna give the contents. I, I just want you to understand how this works first. Make sense? Okay, yes. challenge for you guys, challenge for you. So what happens if the start date is three, for example? So what I'm telling the, the program is it starts from 3 to 10, you see? But take a look to what is gonna happen. I will put here a bullet. Are you with me? Can you follow me? Let's do the four for a minute. Are you with me, guys? Yes. Okay, so what if I do this? Okay, so my sequence in X sequence is going to be very simple. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, et cetera. What is the issue that we have here, guys? Do you see? What it will do is I is gonna be three. So it's gonna it's gonna talk, it's gonna put X position three equals I. Okay, so let's take a look to what happens in a minute. Take a look to what happens. Oh, I see. Yeah. Let me let me oh you, you can see this here. Do you see that? Yes, yeah. Okay, so solutions, because I don't want that. What I want is to basically eliminate these values here. Correct? So what I want, so you have this challenge, guys. So your challenge is the following. I have this variable that is X4. Oh, sorry. I have this already here. I want to select, I want to be X4 only to be this part here. 
a very simple solution that we have worked already. Professor? Yes. Maybe just so I can understand it better, why does the program um, not eliminate it automatically? Oh, yes, because of the following. So remember that we start, I is going to start at three, right? Yes. So the, the first, if you, if you follow this logic, it's going to be X4, I is going to be three. X4 position three equals three. Do you agree? And this is correct. X, Y position three is three. That's perfect. So all the sequence is beautiful. It's perfect. The only thing that we have is that we have these two extra numbers, these two extra zeros. Yeah. So uh, now my question is, okay, this is okay, but give me one easy solution in which you can, okay, you have this issue here, but I want just to, from this matrix, I want to select, I want to select only these ones here. We have done that. Remember the logical, con the logical conditions, et cetera. Forget about all the program. I imagine we were two classes ago, and then I give you this. I want you to select, I want X, let's say X, I want X to be from here to here. So then wouldn't you say you want um, all the rows, and then you would want columns from column, three to 10. Yeah, okay. Okay, that, that, sounds, that sounds really interesting idea. So this is going to be what? And, and you have already, this is going to be X equals X4, and you need to give me the positions here. Um, then you would say- But you have the values, remember? Oh, no. Or three to 10? Yeah, but these are the data. This is exactly these points here. Do you agree? Take a look. If I do this, oopsie. Oh, what I'm doing. Yes or none? Access to you guys. One very easy solution. Agree with me or not? Yes, that makes sense. Okay, so let me stop and then so let's I modify. Have one quick yeah. question. Yeah. So whenever you, because I know usually when we do like the position details, it's like something like rows, comma, column. But if you don't have any commas or if you're only focusing on one aspect and it's a vector, yes. it automatically uses the length, I guess. Yeah, it uses the length. Yeah, you can use length if you want. Yes. I mean, like just when you're using like the positions, like you put a sequence in there and it just automatically went with the, um, like with you the... didn't have to put one comma. And then that, or like all of the rows, comma, that, the sequence, right? This sequence, you, you mean this sequence? Yeah, so that sequence is like for the columns, but I'm saying you don't have to put. Oh, no, because I yeah. only have a vector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? If you want to be sure, what you can do is one, because I have only one. So I, I, I deleted already. Yes, but if you want, you can do the one. The MATLAB is, is smart enough. If you have a, a row vector like this one here, like this one, you see? So you don't need to put the first argument. 
you don't need that. Also, if you have a column vector that is like that, vertical, you don't need to put the number of columns because you have only one. So MATLAB is going to understand that this one here is exactly like, like this one here. And I'm good. Yes, do you understand? Okay, yeah, I understand now. Okay, so now what we can do is let's modify our program to make this more robust. So normally, guys, what I do is I call this one here auxiliary because I will modify this one here. And also this one here, I will call this aux, aux of auxiliary, auxiliary, got it? And then what do, what do I do when I finish my, my loop? Okay, here I need to adjust my X4. Here's where I compute my X4. My X4 is going to be equal to this sequence here. That is simply, and then I simply enter what I, what I told you. I enter this part here. And in this case, guys, you see the, the one that you export is the clean one. This one here is only internally. It internally will create a vector with zeros and the numbers. And then the number that I want to export is basically, I just want from here, just eliminate the, the zeros. This implies take, the, take your data from start data and end data from three to 10. And we can do the same for this one. So let me copy this one here. And then the X, Y is going to be equal to the X, Y. What do you think? Let's call this one E1. So let's copy this as a different file, guys, just to so you can understand the sequence. So the first program that we did, guys, works perfectly if the starting point is always one. You agree? It works perfectly. However, if the start data is, is larger than one, then you need to do this, uh, this adjustment. Makes sense to you guys, you understand? Let's try to run. Professor, can you please show the last um, code again? Yeah, this one? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, one minute. Just be sure that you that you copy and you understand. Thank you. Okay, so now can we run that one? So now let's start running. This one here, for example. I will run, uh, oh, sorry, I need to change this one to be V1. Did um, we have to save the V1 yeah, as a new file? Yeah, we have to save it. Oh, oh, oh. Don't tell me I haven't saved it. Oh, yeah, I saved it. That's okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So now I can run this, right? Oh, what happened? Oh, no, no, nothing. Simply stopped here. So you can see the, the auxiliary one, guys. It, it has the zeros, you see? I don't want these zeros. So it's very simple. What I will do is I, I have my X my X4 aux, and I will simply use these ones, the start date and end date. 
And that's ex and those are exactly the, the values, guys, that have no zeros. Do you agree? Do you agree with me or not? Always. We want to test with the normal value. Let, let's, let me work here. Take a look to what happens with the X4. Oh. What happened? I also got this error, Professor. I'm not sure. Oh, okay, got it. What it means. Let, let me let me check. Let me check. Yeah, let's just stop here for a minute. You know, this is beautiful because we can debug. I cannot debug this one. I need to create a program. <clears throat> okay, so up to here. Let's run up to here. I have x4 aux is one comma ten. Do you agree? Ah, it's not comma, guys. Semicolon. Remember. Is semicolon because we want from here to here. Now it should should work. Let's take a look. Do you understand? All right. What I want is from position three to position ten. Then let me stop again here. I guess you can take a look. Uh, where is that? Here we go. The the auxiliary goes from position three to ten. That's exactly what I want. Make sense, guys? So if we run this, if we continue running this, take a look to my X4. Now I have the X4 is exactly the same as, as my X sequence. You get it? So we can run completely this one. And now we get what we want. Okay, makes sense or not? I'm trying to see where I went wrong. I'm just looking at the codes because I got in different numbers. Sorry? Can you repeat I'm that? saying I ran mine and it's not giving me um, the same output. So I'm just trying yeah. to see where in my era, like for the X4 AUX, it's still giving me zero, zero, and then three, four, five, six. But I think probably there's something wrong in my formula. So I'm just trying to check that quickly. Yeah, can you check this quickly? Yeah, let's take one minute for that. Guys, when, when you guys are working, can you test your model, for example, between, let's start between 10 and, and 20. See if it works. You can do a stop. Let's, let's start practicing your debugging. A stop at 15. And then stop later, just start debugging. Let's see how this works.
works or, or works or not, guys? Mine is working. That's it's working, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look. Let me put the value. The, I stop here so I can run this one here. You can see a bunch of zeros, and we have that 10, 5, 14, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then what we do is simply take this, this one here. It should work. Here we go. It works perfectly. I don't know what I'm doing with mine. It's not working. It's still giving me the zeros. What do you mean? Can you show me your screen very quickly, please? Very, very quickly. Okay, I'm actually working off my phone, but let me try and um, how can I? No, you need to be connected okay. with a computer. So I'm doing it on my computer, but like, <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me just show you. Uh, oh gosh. Uh, I don't know how to do it. It's fine, Professor. I'll try to catch up. I'm just okay. going to try to check the codes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, guys. So let's continue. <clears throat> let's continue here. Uh, okay. So now, what if, guys? Okay. So let's let's do um, another for loop. So let me show you my my other screen. Do you see my screen? Yes, yeah, so you could see your whiteboard. Okay, so now the, the, the new challenge for you guys is, is another look, uh, do another. Oh, uh -huh. Uh, oh yeah, okay. So now do another 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 uh, using the, the while loop. What I want from you guys is to basically create uh, a number, create a sequence jumping a cert certain number. So for example, I want you to create, imagine if we can create this one from one, increasing by three up to 12 so using while loops okay so what i want from you is a start end and the increase by using the the while loops
Let's call this my wild 2023, okay? So we can call this, let's call the function. And, and what we want here is a, a start date data. Sorry, and Professor, then, we can't see your math. Oh, screen. you don't see. Sorry, sorry. Now, do you see that? Yes. I, I have it written just. I just I want the start data and the increment. And try to do this using the, the while the while loop. And let's say three minutes. I will stop the recording for three minutes. Yeah. So I'm talking about the always you you will start somewhere. What I'm saying oh, in the okay. notation of the while, this part here, you don't have the mm -hmm. start and the end, as opposed to you the just four. Have the end. Okay. Yes, okay. in the four, you need to have both. Makes sense. Won't we change where we say j is equals to j plus one? That plus one, won't it be three now because we said the increments are three? If this is one, it's going to be one plus one is two. And then go to the, to the while. And then once it does again, it's going to be two plus one is three. So it goes this way. So the first yes, one, I'm saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. I'm saying for for this new one that we're trying to do now. Oh, I don't know. We're going. Yeah. yeah. Wait, wait. Yeah, I was thinking that you cannot do a start date. What you need to do is basically say, no, sorry, my question was was wrong, because you cannot do what I what I told you in a very simple way. So let's assume, guys, that this is simply what I want from you. Let's call this n. What I want from you, yeah, I, I think you're investing time in something you're not going to be able to solve at this point. You want number of observations and, and, and the increment. And you always want to start from one. So let, let me write this here. Uh, you want to create a sequence that always starts at one. Uh, N will be the number of numbers you want to create let me think because otherwise it's going to be very complex for you give me one second no. that's an n will be the the n value the max value and ink will be the increment. So, okay, so basically what you can do with the, what the things we know is basically what I want is imagine. Um, do you remember lean space? So I want, one to 10, no, I know it's not in space. So let's do xx equals one to increasing by three up to 10. Yes. So this n is going to be this value. And three is going to be the increase. And we are always going to start at one. Okay, so don't, don't bother about other, other problems. Yes, from one. So this do this example using the while loop, much better.
let's, let's try to do this, okay? So let, let's assume, guys, that I will do... I, I have two things here that I need to be very careful. I need to have the increment and I need to have the... the, the just to collocate the position, right? Make sense? So I need to have the increment. I need to have a, an indicator that captures the increment. And I need to have an indicator that captures the position of the of the of the observation in a matrix. Correct, guys. I need to have two indices. Agree with me or not? Yes, makes sense. Okay, so let, let's let's assume let's do i equal one, and let's do j equal one. Okay, so we have these two guys. Now, my y condition should be so. Let's do. It's going to be based on my ink in on my n, right? So it's going to be y i is smaller or equal than n. So I have an n somewhere here. Then what I do here, oh sorry, it's not one, one y i is equal, is smaller or equal than n. So imagine this is 10. So we say it's one is smaller than 10. Yes. So what I need to do is what? So basically, my 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 x. So this one here is going to let's, let's say this one. This one here is going to be for the increment. And let's assume that this one here is for the position. Okay, we can define this as different ways. So if i equals less than n, so I want x position j position one. Right? To be equal to, if it's the first time, it's going to be equal to i, correct? If it's one, it's going to be equal to one. Always we start at one. So that's what I'm saying. Now, what happens at the second point? So what I want is i to increase in a, in a certain way, correct? So i at the beginning is one, but i is going to increase by the increment, correct, guys? So what I will do is I will say i equals i plus the increment. And my position is going to be always increasing by, by one. What do you think? So let's let's think. When when I use one, okay, so the first position is going to be one, correct? So once we do this, the second i is going to be one. So it's not going to be one, it's going to be i. It's going to be one plus my increment. So imagine this is three, one plus my increment is four. Correct, guys? Yes or no? Yes. And yes. my position is going to be position two. So this is good. So I go here, it's going to be x position two, it's going to take four. Now, the next one is going to be four plus three is seven. My next position is going to be position three. So now it works. It goes here, x position three is going to be seven. Uh, now it's going to be seven plus three is 10. My next position is four, it goes here. Perfect, it works. And now my next i is going to be 10 plus increment is 13. And it will ask, is 10 less than 10, uh, sorry, 13 less than 10? No, Oop, out, done. Apparently it works. Let's take a look. Okay, can you take a look? Try to understand. Guys, don't don't worry if, if you are not able to do this very quickly. At this point, what we want is basically. and try.
Make sense or not, guys? Yeah, it works. Works. Okay, so let me let me check. Let me check if it works. Let me see. So n, we say that it's going to be ten. Increment is going to be three. Yeah, it works. Okay, so you can test this this one, these things here, guys. You are gonna you're gonna get more intuition about how these things work in in real examples. Okay. Let's do one example. Let's let's you create one example very quickly. Um, I think we what is uh, the homework number four? Do you have uh, your homework number four? Where's homework number four? Let me open this. I don't care about this stuff. Yeah, I, 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 let's do this one. You have this, is this is assignment number four. Have you done this, this exercise, guys? Not all of it. Okay, so how, do you have this one here? Can you copy this one here in your function, guys? Can you please create a function, quantity price sugar? I will create a different one. So, so let me close this one. Let me close this one. Let me open this one. Copy this from your from your from your assignment. Okay, and and let's start first. Let's start talking about this stuff, and then we start doing what the assignment is telling us to do. This is a, a beautiful application of the for loops. Are you are you with me here? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's try to run this one here. So they they told us that we can run this one here with uh with five. Oh. So let's do five kilos and the price is twenty five. Okay. So let's see if this works. What I will do here is, guys, I will add the D. Remember that D is simply nothing. It's simply to, to allow me to stop. I will stop here. Now, let's run this one here. Oh, so I need to have, oh, I don't have anything to report at this point. Yeah, so you see, you enter the kilos, five, price, 25. The discount is 0 0.2, the 20%. The cost is kilos times price. Then what I, I'm asking here is simply, if the kilos is larger than five, the final price is one minus 20% times the cost. So it's basically, we have a 20% discount over the cost, do you agree? So is this true that kilos is larger than five? No. So my final price is going to be exactly equal to my cost. Do you, everyone understand this part here? Yes. Okay, so now based on this model here, okay, what we need to do is we are going to work on the homework. So the homework is telling me, okay, we do this, A. Let's do this, A. Please, let's do five minutes to invest here. I'm recording or not? Oh, yes, I'm recording. Okay, so what I want from you guys, let's do this together, okay? What I'm saying is that you have this, this program here. And then the thing is that I want to do the following. If the cost paid exceeds 1,000, then I apply an, an, an additional 5% discount. That's all. So if my cost paid 
is more than 1,000, I want you to increase a 5% discount. That's all. So you already have a 2% a, a discount, a 20% discount, sorry. So we're increasing it by 5% or the 20% no, no, no. becomes 5%? Uh, no, 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 on top of the 20%. So if we have a 20% discount, I think this is what they say, where is that word looking here? Uh, an additional one. So if the cost paid is exceeds at $1,000, then apply an additional 5% discount. So basically, if this number here, sorry, no, not this one here. It's my final price. If my final price is larger than $1,000, then apply an additional uh, 5%. So we can call this discount one. And then we have another discount. Let's call it discount two. I will stop this. I have stopped. Yes. So basically, the only thing that we have done, guys, is simply add this part here. We have an additional condition that says that if this final price is larger than 1,000, we have on, on, on a, an additional discount equal to 0 0.5 of the, of the previous final price. Got it? So what we have done is we have tested. Uh, let me check this one. We have tested this, uh, let's, let's use this one here again, just to test that indeed it works. Kilos is larger than five. So if we go here, kilos is larger than five. And I, I have get into the loop. So my price is going to be, my final price is going to be one minus 20% times the cost. So it's going to be 200. And so that's what we showed. Final price 200. So now let's see if indeed works my second condition. So what I will do is I will increase this price to 250. And let's do this. Yeah, I need to run from here. So kilos is larger than five, correct? So it goes into the final price. It will go inside this one here. My final price is going to be equal to, oh, I need to, run a little more. My final price is going to be equal to 2000. So it satisfies this condition also, right? So I need to have an additional 2% discount. So 2000, I should pay at the end 2000 times 0 0.98. I should pay 1960. So I run this one here. My final price is 1900. Why is that? Oh, it's 5%, yes. This is correct. So it works. Okay, everyone is able to get these values, guys, please. Please so now go down again, Professor, so we can see. You said kilos is, we are made it to 10. Yes. And then price, we put 250. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me check this. Yes, 250. And then what must the outcomes be? The outcome should be 1,900. I think we, we got 1,900. Okay.
Okay? So now challenge for you for a couple of minutes. Listen to me. This works with one product and one price. Do you agree? What can you do to this program? What can you do to this program, guys, to consider not only one program, but uh, not only one product, but imagine two products with two prices. So for example, what happens if I define to you X equals, let's do 1025 and 10,250. So basically what I'm telling to you here is, is a vector. You have the prices, sorry, the, the kilos are in the, in the first column and the prices are in the second column. I want your, your program to basically able, to be able to work with these numbers. So it's not only a single kilo now, it's not a single product, it's, it's a multiple products. There are multiple products. So how can you adapt your program? You understand what I'm talking, right? Okay, three minutes to think. Now, you know what, let me do the following. Let's, let's do this. This is my X, correct? Can you type this X guys for a minute? Copy this X in the, in the vector, in the worksheet, workspace. Okay, so now let's enter the data into my program. So quant sugar, 23 is not going to be only this one here. It's going to be X, all rows, comma, one. Agree with me or not? And this one here is going to have the prices. As I mentioned to you, the prices are in the second the second column, all, all uh, elements. Guys, I need to know if you are with me now. Because we need to do this together. Yeah, I follow. Okay, so we enter. And so you can see here kilos. I have two products now. Prices, I have two prices now. Correct? So first question. My cost is a, is, is a, is a multiplication. Remember, for, for MATLAB, this multiplication is a matrix multiplication. So I cannot multiply uh, uh, two times. Two times one times a two times one, but I don't want that. What I want is to multiply the ten times a twenty-five and the ten times a two hundred fifty. So what what do we do here? Instead of this one, what do I use? Don't you maybe a dot? Yeah, exactly. Element by dot. element multiplication, guys. Of course. 
So this is going to multiply the 10 times the 20, uh, 25, and the 10 times the 250. Beautiful. Excellent. OK, so let me save this one here. And let's move again. Let's do this again. Take a look. So now your costs are 250. And two, uh, so you are going to pay <clears throat> 250 for the same for the first product and 2,500 for the second product. Agree with me or not? Do you agree or not, guys? Yes. Yes. OK, so now remember that at this point, my discounts are going to be based on individual kilos. So I apply the discount for the first product, and I apply the discount for the second product at, at this point. So how do, how do I do that? So basically, what I need to do is I need to read line by line of the cost. Do you agree? So this one here is going to be my first product. I need to apply all this technique here and then get the final price for product for, for the first product. Then I do the second product. What I need to do then, compute all this part here and compute the final price for a second product. That's what we want to do. So what I need to do is what? How, I need to calculate how many products do I have, right? Guys? Yes or not? Yes. yes. OK, so I will call this, imagine, number of observations. So how do I compute the number of products that I have in my, in my, in my system? Because this mm -hmm. matrix can have four, five, six, whatever. The length what? of the vector or what? the yeah. length of the input vector. E, yes. So length or, yeah, I prefer to do the size. Yeah, it is, it is correct also. The size of cost can be, because the cost is going to be what? Uh, what, what dimension, rows or, or columns? Was it a column vector? It is no, it is a oh, wider. No, I think it's a wait a second. So let me, let me, that's a good point. So let me semicolon, semicolon. Let's do this and let's check. So this is a, the way, guys. Uh, I, I, again, this is the way you program, guys. When you start, you start, pro, you, you need to really understand, okay, now I do this. This is my cost. So it is a two times one. So it's basically one, correct? So what is this knobs is going to give me? It's giving me what, guys? The number of pros that, that I have, yes or not? Still trying to cook it to run the thing, Professor. Um... Ready? Are you with me or not, guys? Yes, that should be the number of products. Perfect. So now what I need to do is I need to run this. How many times? All this part here. I need to run this, this two, in this case, twice, right? If I have five products, I need to run this five times. So what do I use to do to, to run this as many times as I need? What I need to do? For loop. Yeah, what I can do is a four, let's do for I equals one to what? How many times I need to loop? The number of observations. Exactly, yeah. the number of observations. Or you know what, better if we, let's, yeah, okay, let's call it number of observations. And then remember this, this must end somewhere. So you need to just, that's what I do is, you know, do four and four. And then what you do guys is you block here. And then you go a smart in them. You see that? In here, my mouse. You see that? And it will it will indent for you beautifully. So now you see that this four 
ends with these four things here. And then what? Okay, so now I'm doing, I'm looping for two products. What I need to do, remember guys, is I need to go one by one. I need to check the cost. I need to check the kilos, but one by one, do you agree? So basically what I need to check first, kilos is a, is a, is a, a two times one. What I need to check is what? I'm, I'm looking for the first product. So this should be kilos of I, correct? If kilos of I is larger than five, so the first product has more than five kilos, what I need to do here, guys, oh, but I don't have, as soon as I'm, I'm doing a loop, I need to define the final price also as a, as a vector. So let, let me check this one here. You know, one easy way is simply I will define zeros, knobs, comma, one. So what is what I'm doing here? So I'm creating a vector, guys, that at the beginning it has only zeros. How many rows? Two. How many columns? One. Got it? So now what I can do is from this, take a look position one, it's going to be Let me tell you if this if this is right or not, because I'm talking only about the first product. If not, and then perhaps we can export the final price. What do you think? So why I'm doing this I guys, because I need to leak, I need to read one by one the rows of kilos, the rows of price, the rows of costs. You agree? Okay, take a minute to copy and think because that this this is one of the most interesting for applications. Yeah. So basically, this uh, knobs is telling me the number of products. Okay. Okay. And then perhaps what we can do now, we can argue, we can write here this program now is able to work with matrices. One column vector. for kilos and one column vector for price, do you agree? And then for example, we can where's my X? We can add this one here. Okay, so let's let's see if it works out. Let's see if it works out. Okay, so let's do and I want to stop somewhere here. I want to stop here. Let's do this together. Now let's take a look to my kilos. My kilos are what do I say? My price are what I say. My discount, discount, perfect. My cost is a matrix now. It's a, it's a vector, 250 and 2,500. Makes sense? I want to tell MATLAB, okay, compute the number of, uh, of pros that I have. I call it knobs. And then what I've created, guys, this is an artificial. This is a, an artificial. I will show you another way of, of creating this stuff. But for now, I, I created this this uh, vector that is is just zeros. I will replace this vector later by the numbers that correspond here. Make sense? So this is we are initializing.
Make sense? Now, what we are going to do here is line by line. So, so we know this. We know this. So now I equals one, correct? Oh, wait. Where am I? I need to stay. So now I equals one, guys. So what I will do is I ask if kilos one. So what is kilos one? The first ten. Do you read this number? Yes. If this number is larger than five, okay, the final price of product I, or sea, of, of the first product, is going to be one minus discount multiplied by the, by the cost of I, by, by this cost here. Right? So what is the price of I? Eh, sorry, eh, da, 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 well, I need to, to compute this one here. Price of I, I need to compute first my price, of course, my final price. Let me see. Oh yes, of course. What I'm doing is is kilos I less larger, larger than one. Yes. So I will do this again. So this is going to go inside. Correct? So now my cost of I is 250 times 150. This is going to give me 200. So let me run this. You see at this point, 200. So you see what happened with my final price at the beginning was zero, zero. Now it's 200 and zero. It replaced a zero by 200. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. Now what I will do is I will ask, now for my final price I, final price position one, is larger than 1,000, yes or not? No. So it doesn't do anything. And it simply finishes the, the first round. Now it will go into the second round. So now I equals two. What is kilos two is, is 10, so it goes here. The final price of product two is going to be the cost two multiplied by the discount. So this is going to be 2,500 times 80% is $2,000, right? So let's run this one here and take a, to, take a look to what happens. 200 and $2,000. Beautiful, right? Now we go to the, the next question. Is the final price I, so final price two, larger than 1,000? Yes, it is. So what it will do, it will go into the program. You see, because $2,000 is larger than 1,000, so it will go here, it will compute this number here. So this should be $2,000, one minus 0, 0 times 95, I think this was 1,900. Okay, so if we run this one here, it ends already because the number of observations is two. And take a look to your final price, guys. 200 for the first product and 1,900 for the second product. Make sense? Then I can comment this out because this part works. So I can call this pro, I can call this one here. We'll simply do this. Here I go, my final price. Oh, why is 200 here? Oh, I have I have to stop this. Why is it stopping here? Oh, wait a second. So I have the discount. I don't have any. So let me see. Why is this stopping here?
Yeah, this is a definitely a bug in my system. I don't see anything here, so it should work. Do you see? I, I don't understand why it's, it's doing this stuff here. It's as if I had a, a stop here. Okay, I can continue. Continue. Okay, now finally I have my final price. I don't know why is this stopping. I need to give me one second, guys. I will. Can you test your programs? I will stop MATLAB and restart MATLAB. One second, please. Yeah, it's really stuck in one second. Yeah, let's try and let's see. Let's see how this works. Okay, I have nothing. So let's let's run this again. Oh, I need to define X. Then I need to run this one here. Here we go. You see that? You get this, the same results, 200 and 1,900, starting with this function here. Yes. So is it, did we have to then copy X again? Because it gave me a couple of errors before it gave me the final answer. Yeah, you, you know what, I, I think this is, um, I don't know what's going on with this version of MATLAB. I, I have seen a lot of issues. So I, what I've done is close MATLAB, open MATLAB again, and works in, works naturally, works normally. Okay. Okay, I, I don't know, should be a bug somewhere. Because like when I enter it, it, it starts like um, by my line where it says four I equals one, and then colon knobs. And then I have to press continue, continue, continue. Yeah, 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 that, that's what I'm saying. That, that, yes, that was oh. exactly what happened to me. Exactly that okay. happened to me. I just turned it off, turn it on again, and it worked now. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why it's, it's doing that. Guys, make sense to you? Yes. Yes. Okay, so an additional discount. Okay, so we have this part here. Now, assume, guys, that if your total 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 price you're gonna be paying. So basically, if you pay more than two thousand in total for the two products, you have an additional five percent discount or two percent discount for an overall product for for your overall overall sales. Okay. So can modify you your product. I, can you please say that again? If you have for yeah, both think, products, if I, the total yeah. exceeds two thousand. Yes, so what I will do here is if the total paid is greater than 2,000, apply it an additional 2%, I'm sorry, 2% is count to the total paid. Report the individual prices in the individual prices, the discount, the, the final discount, and the total final payment. So you, you know what, guys, now, just to make it more consistent, let's call this final price. Let me replace, let me find, I'm sorry, let me find and replace. Let's call it final price uh, per product. Because this is per product, do you agree? Yeah. 
the atmosphere. Final price per product. So because this is a vector. And, and let's create, guys, uh, the, the, let's create, let's create another total, total uh, so let's, let's call this one here, total, okay. let's, let's make this, the name of this variable is going to be total paid. And let me put this perhaps here. So let's call, I will have another discount, discount three, that is going to be equal to 0 0.02, correct? And let's call my final price, Threshold. We said this was going to be two thousand dollars. Okay, so you need to add something. This should be a very easy one, huh? So. We'll be sending you one file <clears throat> in a minute. While you work, I will be sending you one point. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, I have sent you one file that we are going to start using. <clears throat>
One more minute, guys. This is an easy one, guys. Huh? One minute, guys, we're starting. Okay, guys, so let's do this. Let me record this again. Oh, no, I didn't stop recording. Okay, so what, what I need to know is how much money I'm paying, correct, guys? How much money I pay? How, how do I compute that? This is what I call- You have to like sum. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. Like... I need to sum. This, this is a vector, remember? The sum, 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 sum is a vector. That's it, that's the total I, I'm paying. Agree or not? Agreed. Yeah, and then after that, this simply says, you know, I need to have a condition. If the total paid, if total paid is larger than, I just put this final price threshold just to make it more, let's say greater or equal. So what happens if I have this one here? Total paid is going to be discounted, right? I'm sorry. Times one minus discount, discount three. And then we end. Simple. And then I need to, to export. This is exported already. I need to export. And that's all. Yes or not? Can you please go down still, Professor? Can we yeah, here. Here we go.
of course, guys, you can you can improve this forum just you know showing the discount, the different discounts the pros has, has gotten. You can do this a beautiful product. Okay, but what is interesting for me is that you understand the logic, how the for loops works, how the if condition works, and how you can be adding and adding and adding a, a program. So you can do also all these thresholds, you can do this enter by the client, you agree? So you can do whatever you want here in this program. Okay, let's test. I don't know if it works. It should work. Professor, did you then go and did you define discount three at the top? Oh yeah, I, did, I defined this here. Oh, okay. Oh, and also I've good. defined a final pr price threshold. I can also do this one instead of 1000, I can do perhaps, um, you know, I can do something like that. So just to make it more cool and more efficient. And then oh, instead so of 1000, um, instead of 1000, I use this one here, do you see? Uh, also you have, you defined. I have defined, instead of writing, I, I always don't like to write numbers guys, because if I'm right, imagine this code starts growing and growing and growing, then yeah. I will be looking for my 1000. Where I put 1000, 1000, you know, much easier if you put a, a threshold, oh, sorry. This must be a, a threshold uh, because uh, this one here. You see? So basically it says, if this final price per flow is larger than the threshold, okay, do something. And then I can change this here. I can change, I want this to be 1,500. Oh, sorry, 2,000. I, I, I can change whatever I want here. You know, the, the data part of the programs, I normally put them at, at the top. Then I modify here. If I have, you know, if I use these thresholds hundreds of times, no issue because it will capture this value. Got it? And also, this is interesting to put it here because what you can argue, guys, is you can put this also, you can request the client to, to give you these values. Give me the discount one, give me this, 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 and this. And they you simply write them here. And then the client or the one, the user is going to put all these numbers. You need to describe, of course, what is discount one, what is discount two. You need to. That's why you use this part here to to describe what your what your inputs are, what your outputs are, etc. So this okay. part here needs to be really neat. Can you go slightly lower, Professor? I just want to see because I think you amended. Yeah, I just changed this one here, and then I I added this part here. Okay, so with the second if that the last one is a threshold. Um... Uh, here. Which one? Um, Here? For, yeah, at, at the top, yeah, that one. That was 1,000. Th this is 1,000. So, oh, so, so you removed 1,000 and just yeah. put in what you defined 1,000. Exactly. A variable. It's much easier to work with variables, always. Because if I want to change this 2,000, for example, I don't need to change mm -hmm. here 2,000. You see, it's easier to modify the, the numbers on top. So yeah. this part here is, is a data description. Basically, and then you forget about what what goes what goes down. Make sense, guys? Yes. Okay, so now let's let's run this this program again. Yeah, so let me let me remove the this one here so I can stop my program. I will stop it here. So I can see all the middle steps, intermediate steps. So run. Okay, so you see, uh, up to here, I mean, take a look. This is my final price. 200 for product one and 1,900 for product two. Do you agree? Make sense? Agreed. Yes. So now what is my total paid? 2,058, why is that? Oh yeah, yeah, because I already modified that, sorry. I need to stop it here. Let me, you know, that's why normally what I do just to keep track of everything, I will call this auxiliary and the total paid aux, total paid aux. So I distinguish between my total price and my total price auxiliary. So you can see the difference of prices. So let me, you understand what I'm doing? Right? This auxiliary, auxiliary are the programs that I, I call variables that I will never export, but they help me to to understand what is going on inside. 
Let's take a look to what happens. Run. I need to run from here. Yeah, take a look. The total paid is 2,100, correct? It's 200 plus 1,900. So the client is gonna pay us 2,100. However, we have an additional extra discount because they have, they, they have a $2,000 discount on the total. Dissatisfied? Then you are gonna be paying only, you're gonna be paying only 2,058. Do you see that guys? So you should have paid 2,100, but because you have bought more than 2,000, you're being, you're going to be ending just paying 2,058. Guys, and, and this type of programs are if you go to, you know, Sears or, or you know, I don't know, uh, Macy's, they apply this type of discounts, you know, they have a 25% discount for you being my best client, and then 70% discount because we are off season. And they give you these type of things. This is the way you created that. Of course, you create that programs, and I think they are uh, native, so they should be C++ or I don't know. But the idea is, is very simple. It's this, this type of product. You, you have four loops, you have a bunch of other things. Makes sense to everyone. Guys, makes sense to everyone. Yes. Yes. Okay, excellent. Guys, what you need to do, please, the, from now, you have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You need to redo these programs. We do them, understand what they are doing, okay? Because that, that's crucial to continue moving in here. Okay, so now uh, I will do something that is, I sent you a, a, an Excel file. Can you open the Excel file, please? I think it's called temp something. And just emailed to you a couple of minutes ago. Mm. So let me clean this part here. Do you see the Excel file, guys? Yes. Okay, so now what I have here, guys, is, is this one here. I have data. I think these are temperatures during one month. Yeah, 31 days of three different cities. City one, two, and three. Okay, this is very simple data, but what I want to show you is how to import data from Excel. And we normally have the data in Excel, and then we're going to be importing, exporting to, to Excel. Got it? So we're going to be working with, with this one here. Now, what I need to know is where is uh, my directory? Uh, sorry, my directory is... Uh, my directory, you, you need to find, please save this in a... Oh, here is my, this is my directory. Okay, so what I will do here, what I will do is, First to open. So what I will call guys is, is this is a variable. Num equals the command is going to be XLS read. And in here you enter the address and the name of the of the file is called temps.xls, I think. Can be XLS X, XLS M, XLS B, whatever. But this is a command, is a I will explain you what is this num. Num XLS read. So this is the way we are going to import the data that is that is in this directory. And that is name this this name.
I don't know why it's doing this stuff. Takes takes too long. You see that? So what we have done now, as soon as I haven't used the semicolon here, guys, I've imported, I have imported the data. But you you note there is no that the labels are not here. Only took the, the numbers. And so that's why by default MATLAB only takes the numbers. So how do we do if I want to take the numbers and the and and the, and the, and the labels? Well, you need to tell MATLAB, you know what? I want two variables. I want these are names, guys. So you can name it like like one. For example. So the first, the first argument, guys, is, is, is going to store all the numbers. And the second argument is going to store all the all the strings, all the names, all the all the labels. Okay, so we can does do the, this again. Does the order not matter? No, no, no. The order matters. The order matters. Okay. So oh sorry. Yeah, what is done? Oh, what is it on apps? No, the order doesn't matter. You see that? The order matters, guys. The first one refers to the names. The second, sorry, to the numbers. And the first one and the second one refers to the labels. Okay, the names can be X and Y, can be whatever, huh? but I always use these ones here just to remember. The first one is numbers and the second one is labels. Okay, so for example, then what we can do is we can write another variable, variables description, for example, is going to be lab, the, this one here, one, one, two, size, or just one, uh, one, what I'm doing, one comma, everything. No, and then I have my variable description that is going to contain these, these numbers here. But what is important, guys, is this one here. This is what is crucial. How do I read? Simply, nums, uh, the numbers first, the, the labels later. Are you with me? Are you were you able to upload your files? Yes, I was able to import the data. Excellent. So now what we're gonna do, this is another thing that is very cool. It's not very useful. Well, it is useful if you have very small data sets, but if, if you have very large data sets, it, it is not useful. So imagine guys that if you just copy the same and do minus one. Oh, so here I, I just need to know this, but anyway, just type minus one. Close your, your Excel file, please. Close this Excel file for a minute. Ready? Just enter. Yeah, and they say select data and click OK. So normally it should have open to you. So here what I will do, so MATLAB open this one to you. And so from here, guys, I can select, for example, this part here. You see that? With your mouse, you select the piece of the, of the data that you want. That's what I'm saying. It's not so useful if you have huge data sets. But if you have a small data set and you just want to consider the first 15 observations, the easy thing is just block whatever you want. And once you are there, once you have done that, just go here and OK. And take a look to what happens with MATLAB. You know, it just took the numbers that we have selected. Cool, no? Cool, but not so useful. Are you able to do that? Yes. Okay, so I will I will do something more. 
this is more this is more useful. I will just focus on the on the numbers. Okay, I will just now. Now what I would do, guys, is I can I can tell MATLAB specific locations that I want. So for example, I want from A2 to C8. Do you see that? So basically I'm saying to MATLAB, just read this piece of your this piece of the of the data. Enter. Here we go. Now, if you see Excel, guys, oh, where's my Excel? Yeah, I need to bring this Excel. One second, I need to open this again. Yeah, here's my. Let me give me one second. I need to save it, not to destroy it. Yeah, let me open the and then. Yeah, do you see my attempts, guys? So you see that we have a uh, different sheets here, correct? So what we can do also, uh, let me check this one. I don't know why is this one here. Well, it can be whatever name. Let me save this and let me close this one. Yeah, do you see that? So now what we can do also, if, if we have different sheets, guys, what we can tell MATLAB is where, where to look. So if you have 10 sheets, you can tell him, okay, go to this sheet. And the name can be whatever, guys. Huh? Oh, sorry. It needs to be like this. So you have the sheet and the the range, and then you can you can put as many uh, the the page that you want. You can this can be named differently, etc., etc., etc. Make sense to you guys? Okay, so now let's let's okay. We know how to read, okay. And once we read, guys, this is like having all the all the things that we have done. We can multiply, we can divide, we can graph, we can do whatever we want. This is the data we have been using, right? That my x is the the small x that I have been created. This is exactly that. So everything we have learned, you can apply here. So now, how do we how do we um, uh, save? All right. So let's do x, guys. For example, to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so let's let's say that I have this X. You have created your programs and you have this matrix that, that is from, for results. So the way you write these guys, okay, let me copy this part here. Let me copy this one. The way you write this one here is XLS write. Where do you want to write? Then let's let's write this. Um, let's call this. Uh, let's call this. Um, what 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 do you want to call it? Let's call. Where's my? Oh no. Excellent. Right. And let's call this, you know, example 2023. I want this to be XLXX. And then what I want to export, I want to export X. Agree? So we are gonna save it and then let's go to the, to go to your directory, guys. This is my directory. And this is what appeared today. Let's open this one. 
and it's coming. And this is what we get. You see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the way you export to Excel. Let me move this somewhere here. Okay, so now perhaps what I want is to, I want to save this one here in a specific, in a specific. Uh... Uh, sorry, Professor. Yes. Um, can I create a data and export it to an existing Excel, Excel file? Yeah, 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 you can, you can definitely. So imagine we have created already, right? You see this one? We have yeah, created yes. this one. Okay, so now what I want is I want this to be, uh, let's say I want to, to export, uh, let's create another thing. Let's create, before you do that, let's create A. That's going to be simply 999999. Okay, so I want to put this one here in a, in a new sheet. So what I will do is I will do, I will do this. I want to export A and I want this to be in sheet number two. Okay, uh, so first of all, you need to be sure that you close your, oh, it's closed. The, the one that I, yeah, it, it is closed. This is not the one. So we're okay. So now enter. And then it says, you know, added a specific, a specified worksheet, blah, 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 blah. And it has saved this one here in the second sheet. So let's, let's open that one. It was name example 2023. Here you go. Sheet one, X, sheet two, this one here. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay. Sorry, can I see the code for that one more yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, of course. Where's my little one? Here, this part here. So these two refers to the second, the second page, three, four, whatever you want. Okay, thanks. Okay, so perhaps let's do let's do another one. Okay, we can add this one also to to my file. So let's do uh, let's do y equals I don't know perhaps one to a hundred um, and let's put below. Yeah, let's do perhaps below 10, 209. Oh, what I'm going here. Yeah, it creates this, this, this thing here. And then what we can do is let's do, let me copy this one here. Okay, then what I want is I want to export, how do I call it? I call it Y, right? And I want this to be called, I want to call this one here, example long. So this is going to be the name of my, of my tab. And I want to start, and just want to, to save it in, starting in C2, going to, so it's going to be C2. Let's, let's go to Z3, for example. Okay, so what it will do is the following. It will open this existing file. It will save this one here. It will open a, a new tab that is in, in this pro, in this Excel file, it's gonna, open a new tab that is going to be called example long. And we'll just copy this, this part here, C2 to C3. So it's not going to copy everything. It's going to simply copy the first observations from that go from C to C. Make sense? Oh, it is open. You need to close first the program. 
let's close this one here and let's run this one here. Yeah, okay, so now we can open this one. Let's open this one. Here we go. You see that? I will show you guys to, to put the, the titles, the this one here. You will want to do this in, in next class. We need to have more time. Uh, now, what I will do, guys, you need to catch up with your homeworks, okay? I, I haven't received homeworks from you during the last, the last week, at least. So what, what you need to do, I will assign you a new homework uh, for the weekend. You need to finish homework five to four, and you need to do homework. You need to do this homework, guys. Number five. This one here is very interesting. This one is easy. You, you're gonna see it's, it's simply a matter of practicing, uh, practicing uh, for loops, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This one here is what you need to do. I will try to find, I, I remember I have a very good notes in a, when I was doing my PhD about the oil, the, the, the algebra for OLS models. I will scan, I will look for that. I will scan this for you. And then what you need to do is simply copy the formulas and develop the formulas and then and, and create your OLS regression. Also guys, what you can do is just go into, into the library, any library, any, any econometrics book, and then you just find the OLS regression, the, the algebra of OLS regression. So even if you go to, to Google, let me let me open something for you. You just do algebra of multivariate or analysis course regression. Yeah, yeah for, for example, let me, let me check this one. I don't know, I'm just taking randomly anyone. Yeah, I want to see if they provide you the formulas. Oh. What happened? Okay. Oops, what happened? I know what happened, guys. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I just want... Oh, my gosh. No, I just want the, the math. Perhaps this is the one. You just go and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this this can be... This can be the one. Yeah, I don't know. What is my... Yeah, they, this one here, guys, this one can be a fantastic example, I think. XB, they give you numbers and then you, yeah, X, X prime, X minus one. This is the way you compute B. The identity matrix. Yeah, you have this one here. Yeah, you know what? This, this one can be a, a, a good one, but I will give you perhaps a, something to, to guide you. We'll do this tomorrow. Uh, where's my? And we'll do this tomorrow. Okay, so let me chat. So this is randomly something that I, I selected here. So you can take a look. But your assignment, guys, the assignment number five, I already sent this to you. This is one of the, the, the things that you must really be sure that you can write. You, you can do the chi square test, F test, uh, ANOVA test. You can do whatever you can imagine here. I will send you, um, you know, it's going to be handwritten, but I need to find that first. Okay, guys, so you know how to export, how to import, uh, you know, all the loops, the for the, the, the while, you know, you, you know, how, you have a lot of things to do now. You, you really, you have, a, if you study, you have a, a, an arsenal of, of things that you can do. Now, the things that we do here, guys, are exactly the same that we use in Python and R. In C, no, well, C is different, but in any in any program that is like that, you are able to do all, all this stuff. Some commands change, but the things are exactly the same. Okay, so we stop here. Questions? Can I just see that, that very last example that you did? Yeah, yeah. In, in MATLAB, you mean? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. So I... So why is it a B? It's just created something wrong. So what I'm saying is use, use this Excel file that already exist, exists. Save this one here that I've created in my program. 
uh, name the the, the, the the sheet x example long. Oh, yeah, you can see you can see that the name here. You see the name? So I can name yeah. also the, the tabs. And, and and basically just save in this part here. Of course, I just you need to be careful when you select this one here. I will show you a technical way of, of selecting a specific uh, cells in, in Excel. But you know, for now, simply say save between C2 and C3. Okay. All right. I, I was just confused about the example long part. I, I yeah, no, know. no. This is simply the name that you have in your in your tab. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, guys. Right. Thanks. So I think we have done a very good today. Uh, now you need to do the exercise. You have a lot of exercise we have done together. And uh, next class, the next week, that is the last week. So we are going to do a lot of things. Okay. So please be prepared and study. You need to study, guys. Programming is, is, is a language. So the only way you can learn a language is, is practicing. There is no other way. Don't just look at and say, oh, I understand. No, do it. Got it? And try to do it by your way. It's okay if you do it in a different way. It's okay at this point if you if you are not as efficient as later you're gonna be, but do it. Okay. Any questions? No questions for me. Perfect. Okay, uh, I guys. have a general yeah. question. Yeah, yeah. Go just, ahead. So just so I understand like the timeline. So um um homework four and five are due Monday on Monday. Yes. When is our final project to Yeah, the program? final. So, okay, so we you're going to have, uh, I think you have two additional homeworks. Okay, these two additional homeworks. So let, these two, let's, let's set up some sometimes. We finish on the 14th, exactly on, on, on a week. So the assignments number six and seven that are going to come on the 12th and the 14th are going to be due on the 19th of um, June. Then the next Monday, We're, we don't have a class, but you need to submit your, your assignment on June 19. Do you agree? Okay, yeah. And then on, on, the, on the 14th, I will talk about the project. I, I will give you examples of projects, but the project guys is going to be due the last day of class. The last day of class is the 28th, the official, official end of, of classes, the 28th. So you have basically one week and a half to work on your project. Now, what this project is, is basically, guys, anything that you want to do, anything. But that shows me that you are able to look for, you are able to do graphs, that you are able to do for loops, while loops, that you are able to, well, more, more complicated, more, uh, you are able to do some symbolic mathematics, that you are able to really manage, a, you know, matrix algebra with, with MATLAB, whatever. But you need to show me that. It is, I, I will not really grade, wow, this is a fantastic pro, um, you know, replica of something. No, what I would like is this guy really understand how to program. That's a goal. Okay. And the next week we are gonna have two very, very crucial tools. One is called symbolic mathematics. We use a lot of symbolic mathematics guys for optimizations, for, you know, what is the, the optimal consumption given a vector of prices when you have a supply and demand curve, for example. That, that one is, is, is beautiful. So you, you're gonna see. And, and you're gonna have a lot of time to practice and to do and, and, and work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Make sense? Okay, I understand, thanks. Perfect. Okay, guys, no more questions. So we see you in, in a couple of days on Monday, okay? Have a nice weekend, please study, work. And, and this is for you guys. Remember, program is going to put you in a different, different stage like everyone. And this is what the people need. The people need, I give you data, work with the data. Okay, so you need to understand how the data works, how to do this stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So for you, Tiffany, that you're going to do a PhD, you, this is crucial for you. Yes, I'm already experiencing the, <laughs> the struggle with this. Yeah, yeah, I know. But this is going to be crucial. And, and it's learning by doing, guys. For all of you, it's learning by doing. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Professor. Okay, guys. See you guys. Take care. Thank bye you, Professor. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, Prof. bye, guys. bye. bye.